Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.5.1, Photosynthesis from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. So let's start with an overview of what we will cover in this session. Photosynthesis can be divided into two main stages, the light-dependent and the light-independent reaction. In the light-dependent reaction, we have to know the stages of photoionization, the production of ATP and reduced NADP via a process known as the chemiosmotic theory, and we'll also cover the production of protons, electrons and oxygen in a process known as photolysis. We will then move on to the second stage in photosynthesis, which is known as the light independent reaction, i.e. it doesn't require light in order to take place, and how the products ATP and reduced NADP from the light dependent reaction are involved in this stage. We will then describe the light independent reaction in a little more detail, with a diagram being used to show each product that is formed at each stage in the cycle, which is also sometimes referred to as the Calvin cycle. Finally, the spec says we should be able to answer questions involving factors that may limit the rate of photosynthesis, so I will cover these factors to finish off. Okay, so let's make a start. Before we delve into photosynthesis in more detail, I think it's important to just zoom out a little and give an overview of what is happening. As mentioned, photosynthesis can be split into two main reactions, the light dependent and the light independent reaction. The overall equation for these two reactions combined, and this equation you'll have learnt at GCSE, is carbon dioxide plus water goes to glucose plus oxygen. 6CO2 plus 6H2O goes to C6H12O6 plus 6O2. And this is actually the reverse reaction of aerobic respiration. Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast. And just to recap the structure of a chloroplast, it is surrounded by a double membrane. Inside of the chloroplast, we have a thick fluid called the stroma, as well as a membrane called a thylakoid membrane, which folds into stacks called grana, of which the singular, by the way, is known as a granum. Grana are linked by lamellae, which are thin, flattened pieces of thylakoid membrane. To recap cell structure and organelles, just follow the link top right. There are some key features that chloroplasts have. Thylakoid membranes that provide a large surface area for the attachment of chlorophyll, electron carriers and enzymes, all of which are needed in the light dependent reaction. The membranes also provide a large surface area for the absorption of light. The permeable membrane allows the diffusion of gases. The fluid in the stroma contains all the enzymes required to make carbohydrates in the light independent reaction. Chloroplasts also contain DNA and ribosomes, so can quickly synthesize the proteins needed for photosynthesis. Okay, so let's move on to the first main stage in photosynthesis, which is the light dependent reaction. This occurs at the thylakoid membrane. The first stage is called photoionization. Here, the chlorophyll absorbs light. Electrons in the chlorophyll are excited. These electrons are then donated to an electron carrier and begin moving down the electron transport chain. Next, we have photolysis. The electrons in the chlorophyll must now be replaced. The chlorophyll, which has lost electrons, is now an oxidizing agent. This oxidizes two water molecules to form oxygen. Here is the full equation. This increases the concentration of hydrogen ions in the thylakoid space. Next, we have a process known as chemiosmosis. The excited electrons from photoionization lose energy as they move down the electron transport chain. This energy is used to pump hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space via a proton pump. This creates a favorable concentration gradient for the diffusion of hydrogen ions from the thylakoid space into the stroma. The hydrogen ions diffuse through the enzyme ATP synthase, which catalyzes the reaction between ADP and PI to form ATP. This is known as photophosphorylation. Finally, we have the formation of reduced NADP. Electrons from the electron transport chain and hydrogen ions that diffuse through ATP synthase are used to form reduced NADP. The ATP and reduced NADP then go on to be used in the light independent reaction. That would be the light dependent reaction covered. 
Just before we move on to the light independent reaction, I think this is a good point to clarify you on a few key terms and ways of representing things. You will have seen that the spec mentions the chemical reduced NADP. You may have also seen this being referred to as NADPH. Both are in fact correct and can be used in exams. If you've done chemistry, then you'll know that reduction is the gain of electrons. In the case of NADP, to become reduced, it has gained a hydrogen atom, which is carrying one electron. Hereby, by gaining a hydrogen atom, the NADP has effectively gained an electron, and therefore is said to have been reduced. Note that if asked in an exam why NADP has been reduced, often on mark schemes I've seen that it wants you to say because it has gained a hydrogen atom. Also note that the specification uses the wording proton. This can also be referred to as a hydrogen ion, as those of you who have done chemistry will know that a hydrogen ion is basically just a proton, as to form a hydrogen ion, the hydrogen atom, which is made up of just a proton and an electron, has lost its outer shell electron, leaving just a proton. Finally, there are a number of different chemicals that are mentioned in each stage, and it is perfectly accepted in exams to refer to them using their abbreviated versions, not their full names. So you can just say NADP instead of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Ribulose phosphate can be abbreviated as RUBP, but note however that RUBP is written with BP in capitals. Glycerate 3-phosphate can be written as GP, and triisphosphate can be written as TP. So next we have the light independent reaction. This occurs in the stroma. First, the enzyme Rubisco catalyzes the reaction of RUBP with CO2. This temporarily gives an unstable six carbon compound, which breaks down into two GP molecules. GP is then reduced to TP using NADPH, using energy from ATP hydrolysis. Next, some of the TP molecules are converted into useful organic compounds, such as glucose, sugars, and amino acids. Note that in one cycle, 10 of the triose phosphate molecules are converted back into RUBP, whereas two TP molecules are converted into useful compounds. Therefore, only one sixth of the TP molecules are converted into useful compounds in one cycle. Finally, most of the TP molecules are converted back into RUBP using energy from ATP hydrolysis. Note that it is the inorganic phosphate ion that was released from ATP hydrolysis, which gives the RUBP its phosphate, hence the name ribulose biphosphate. Note also that it's important to know how many carbon atoms are found within each molecule. It is a good idea to learn this diagram off by heart, and it may also be useful to be able to draw this diagram in exams. Finally, let us consider factors that limit the rate of photosynthesis. First of all, we have temperature. The light dependent and light independent reactions both involve enzymes. As we already know from previous parts of the specification, enzyme activity is greatly affected by temperature. To watch my video on enzymes and factors affecting enzyme activity, just follow the link top right. Also at high temperatures, the stomata close, meaning that less CO2 can enter the leaf which slows the light independent reaction. Next, we also have CO2 concentration as a factor that limits the rate of photosynthesis. The light independent reaction requires a source of carbon. At low CO2 concentrations, carbon fixation is therefore slowed. Finally, light intensity also limits the rate of photosynthesis. Energy from sunlight is needed to excite electrons in the chlorophyll. Therefore, at low light intensities, the light dependent reaction is slowed. We can conduct experiments to investigate the effect of factors that limit the rate of photosynthesis. In order to have maximum rates of photosynthesis, we ideally want all three factors of temperature, CO2 concentration and light intensity to be as high as possible. However, if we increase one of the factors whilst keeping the other two constant, we will obtain a graph just like this. And you may get shown a graph similar to this in exams. Here we can see that at first the rate of photosynthesis increases, however the rate of increase decreases and the graph levels off and the rate remains constant when another factor becomes limiting. Great, so we have covered the light dependent reaction including the stages of photoionization, photolysis and the production of ATP and reduced NADP in chemiosmosis. 
We have covered the light independent reaction and how it uses reduced NADP and ATP to form useful organic compounds via the various stages in the Calvin cycle and the different compounds that are formed in each stage. Finally, we have covered the factors that limit the rate of photosynthesis. Great, that would be it for now guys. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, add any ideas or suggestions. See you next time when we will be covering respiration.